Welcome to my channel guys. Uh, in the first part of this video, I'm gonna show you how to add surface details and ornamental details and then we will move on to the next part which is texturing. In the previous video, I modeled this in Valence 3D app uh, on iPad. If you're curious to know how I did it, uh, check out this video. The link will be in the description. So after modeling, I exported this from Valence 3D as OBJ and imported it to Blender for minor refinement and UV unwrapping. Unwrapping is necessary to avoid stretching and weird distortions in the texture, you know. Then to export it, select all the parts and go to File, Export and then click on Web Front. Now finally we are in Nomad Sculpt. Tap on this folder icon and then Import and then select the OBJ file. So here is how the model looks in Nomad. The topology looks clean and here are the unwrapped UV maps. It's also a good idea to properly name all the parts of your model. Trust me, it's gonna speed up your workflow. Now the model is prepared for high poly detailing. I've subdivided the stock a couple of times for more polygons to avoid jagged edges while masking. I want this masked area to look like it's been curved to make room for the metal cap. Now I'm pushing the metal cap in carefully with move brush. The brush size is pretty large. Next, I'm sharpening these edges a little bit with inverted crease brush. Notice how I'm not rushing here and the intensity of the brush is pretty low. I'm drawing gently. I made this curved area for the lock plate using the same technique as this. Now let's add the wooden texture. I've selected the stamp brush and imported a wood texture alpha to make the wood grains of the stock. Now before applying the texture, I'm creating a new layer. This is important. I'll explain in a moment why. So here I'm carefully applying the texture on the model just by dragging like this. I'd normally follow the same technique for you know, tertiary skin details when I'm sculpting a character. You know, like skin pores and stuff like that, wrinkles. With the help of this layer slider, I can control the intensity of the texture quite easily. And that's one of the reasons to work on a layer when you are adding surface details. Also, you can grab the delete layer brush and take out areas of the texture you don't like, like this. So giving your prop a backstory often helps you decide where and why you want to add certain details on the model. Give your prop some character. For example, here I'm drawing this detail instead of using a stamp brush with alpha because I've given it a backstory. The pistol is handmade. The maker probably didn't use any machine for precision. Now that's the feeling I wanted to convey. Ask yourself, how old is the prop? Is it brand new or is it old and collecting dust or somewhere in between? Think about the user of the prop. Does the user take good care of it or throws it away after using it? Stuff like that. Thinking like this helps me immensely. All right, now I'm importing this alpha for the stamp brush to create the engraved text. 
change the follow preset to this check the front facing vertex only box add a new layer and draw and then I'm using the slider to control the intensity of the text like this pretty simple this is a screw brush I made for projects like this if you want to create your own screw brush check out this tutorial I'll put the link in the description so when I'm planning a project like this uh, you know it's got multiple parts and my job is to make it look functional and believable I wouldn't just open my 3d app and start modeling right away before starting the project it's a good idea to spend some time researching about the structure parts and function of the object in my case I spent about an hour researching about the flintlock mechanism how it works what are the parts that need to be there which parts are ornamental or optional stuff like that for this ornamental part, I followed the same technique I used for the engraved text. In my case here, the pistol is not brand new and it's handcrafted. Keeping that in mind, I decided to add more bevels to all the metal parts with the flattened brush like this. And as I said earlier, there is no need to rush. Notice how I haven't voxel remaced even once and so far only relied on subdivision to increase poly count. Well, that's because my model has good topology and proper UVs. Now, if I voxel remaze the model, it will alter the topology and completely mess up the UVs. Another benefit of relying on subdivisions for higher poly count is I can use the subdivision slider to go back to lower poly count without messing up the topology or UV maps. So if my model has good topology and UVs, I'd subdivide instead of voxel remacing. Alright, now it's time for texturing. First I'm gonna change the shading from matte cap to PBR. Now, when you tap on this material and scroll down, you'll see this section called textures. I'll import PBR texture maps like this and instantly get a decent base material to work on. You can make your own material in Blender or Substance Designer or get them uh, from uh, various CG websites online. I'll do the same for these metal parts but I'm not just uh, gonna import the these base textures and call it a day you know if you're wondering what the sphere is doing here all of a sudden uh, it's a shading preview sphere I've added it to figure out the direction of the light source For the brass metal parts, I'm using Nomad's PBR material. Uh, these are good base, but on top of these, I'll add roughness, irregularities, dots, you know, etc. Now, now with the paint brush and noise alpha, I'm breaking up the evenness and also adding dirt on the pistol. I'm looking at references uh, to get an idea about the materials and where the dart usually accumulates and on an object uh, stuff like that so if you learned anything from this uh, tutorial uh, want to see more videos like this please consider subscribing if you have any question regarding this tutorial or 3d uh, modeling in general let me know in the comment and as always, thank you for watching.